the <laughs> the story of Thornton budgets. You know, if one image can tell a whole story, then this this image would be it. And um, Andrew, I would love to I'd love for you to to share the story behind this image a little bit. In the height of the British tomato season, it's probably three meters wide by two meters high, and all of this is. Sealand just rooted around the warehouse. He didn't cost a penny to build this. He, he rooted around the warehouse. He found an old cart, baskets. One day I went in, he was on his hands and knees nailing a post to the back of the cart so we could prop up and go a bit higher. Um, now, not only did, did we then start to sell loads more tomatoes, in fact, loads of fruit and veg, more fruit and veg, the whole store, you know, what better message in a fresh food store to have something like this when you come in? This says, I can... This stuff here is really, really fresh. But not only that, his colleagues started to think, well, comes if he can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So the whole level of display across the whole store improved dramatically. Seelan also grew in confidence. He, to me, he suddenly looked a few centimetres taller than he used to. Um, and he spoke and he engaged with customers much more than he used to. And he's transformed and he shared with his family and his friends just how, what an a huge moment this was in his life. So that is the story, Mark, of the tomatoes. Now, I know that, um, you know, you were already on this journey before we met, and you were one of the pioneers in, in um, adopting and taking on this human potential assessment within your, your store. I think pretty much the whole staff took it at one point. Um, yeah. Can you share a little bit about, you know, the, the key finding there and how it led to promote this idea of self-leadership even further within the store. He said, where would you as a group of individuals, individually and collectively, like to develop? Now, I was chomping at the bit to say inventiveness, because if that's the sort of character I'm at, but I'd agreed I would keep my mouth shut. And there was this very lengthy silence. It was probably only 30 seconds, but it seemed like about five minutes where nobody said anything. And then simultaneously, five or six people said self-leadership. And in that moment, everything at Thornton's Budgeons changed because then we went on a leadership, a self-leadership journey. What we went on is how do we help people learn more about themselves? And we'd already started the tomato. This is this was the, the tomato story had come before that. So we'd already started that. We just hadn't named it. So we start on how can we get people to learn more about themselves and take more responsibility and do more in flow stuff. So how do we reorganize responsibilities? So we've done a lot of responsibility swapping over the years. And there was a load of stuff I used to do. People, the stock meeting is my favorite example. Stock, if you, anybody who's ever worked in retail knows stock is critical. If you're not in control of your stock, you are out of business within a very short period of time. And it was felt by the team that because I was the owner, if I didn't go to the stock meeting every month, then it would be perceived that I didn't think stock was important. And I hated it. And I was actually probably disruptive and a pain in the ass and, and everything. And after this, I stopped going. I have not been to a stock meeting for four or five years. Uh, and is stock control better or worse as a result? I think it's better actually, because um, we're leaving people who are good at stock control to do stock control, rather than trying to force me, who's no interest in stock control, to be involved in stock control. In the, the summer, in July of that year, Sean came in to see us, and we sat four or five of us in the little room with the big heart on the wall, and we watched a film called A Plastic Ocean. And at the end of it, we all looked at each other and said, we have to do something. There wasn't a choice, we have to. If we are the community supermarket that really cares about people and planet, we're given this opportunity to do something, we've got to do something. So we decided we would come up with a number of plastic free zones all around the store in every single category. And after a bit of research over the summer on the 1st of September, we said on the uh, early part of November in 10 weeks time, we are gonna launch 1500 plastic free lines. So what you can see on this picture here on the left is a, the entrance of the store. So the, you can imagine the tomato display is slightly to your right, so you've now passed the tomatoes bit. This is our produce department, as you guys would call it in North America, which used to be 50-50 um, between plastic wrapped and loose. And what you can see now is we turned 85% of it into loose. We did this for three reasons. The first was to 
to be responsible for less putting less plastic into the environment. Secondly, to give our customers and people in the area the chance to shop plastic free if they wished. And thirdly, and most importantly, to show the big supermarket players that it wasn't as difficult as they let on. If little old Thornton's budgets with one shop in North London could do this in 10 weeks, why the hell couldn't someone with the resources of, of Tesco or Walmart globally start to deal with this? This changed the bar on plastic free worldwide. And we had visits from every single senior supermarket executive in the UK, many European countries from as far as wild as Canada and Australia um, to look at what we were doing. And kind of a number of them said, crumbs, OK, we really need to do something different here. And I think two, two players in the UK certainly that made a big difference as a result of this were Tesco and, and Iceland. So how this connects with self-leadership, I think, is I don't believe without self-leadership we could have done the, what we did in such a short period of time because everybody was totally focused. There was no question in, in there's a core team of four or five people working alongside a core team from a plastic planet and everybody on our side and their side, and again, we couldn't have done it without them, on our side and their side, knew this is the right thing to do and were totally committed to it. Mm -hmm. And, and I can sit here and I can take the glory and I presented this all around the world and stand on stage. But ultimately, they were the people who burnt the midnight oil, working all our stupid hours trying to get this all together. Mm -hmm. And they did this because they believed in it. And they believed in it because of our purpose and the approach of self-leadership. You know, they were involved in making a decision to do this. It wasn't my decision. It was our decision. And they were totally committed to it.